My name is Tim Goldsmith and I'd like to welcome you to this short talk where hopefully you're going to learn the basics of 3D and how you can take 3D pictures with your existing camera. So I'm an avid fan of all things 3D. Uh, I collect cameras and 3D images of all sorts uh, and I've been a member of the Stereoscopic Society for many years. Uh, I guess I should say that for the sake of this talk the terms 3D and stereo and stereoscopic are all interchangeable. They're all, they will mean one and the same thing. So the combining of two images into one stereoscopic image was actually known about way before photography was even invented. But it's thanks to Sir Charles Wheatstone, who invented the reflecting stereo viewer in the early 1830s, that 3D photography was really born. However, it wasn't until around 1850 when Sir David Brewster developed a simple viewer that could be handheld that 3D photographs could be easily and cheaply be viewed. At the Great Exhibition in 1851, Queen Victoria was seen using a 3D viewer and from then on things really took off. In fact, the production and selling of 3D images in the late 19th century was absolutely massive business. I guess this was the Victorian equivalent of the internet because absolutely every subject you can possibly imagine was photographed. And yes, that even includes those sorts of subjects. And ever since then, 3D has been through many peaks and troughs of popularity. Uh, from Victorian stereo cards to 3D cameras in the 1930s and 40s, right through to the famous Viewmaster reels, which is still the world's longest lived 3D system right up to 3D TVs, Blu-rays and today's blockbuster IMAX films in 3D. So how does 3D work? Well, most of us have two eyes. Sadly, if you don't, you won't be able to see anything in 3D. Your eyes are set roughly 63 millimetres apart and each eye sees a very slightly different image of whatever it is you're looking at. So to demonstrate this, just hold your finger up in front of you like this and then alternately open and close each eye while looking at your finger. It looks like your finger is moving from side to side, but obviously it isn't. It's just that those are the two pictures that the eye presents to your brain. Now stare at your finger again, but this time with both eyes open. And your brain is now processing those two slightly different images into one and giving them depth. And it's telling you that the finger is closer to you than the background is. Well, this is depth perception and you've just learned how 3D pictures work. Two separate pictures merge into one. The simplest form of 3D is an anaglyph image. And here a separate flat picture is presented to each eye. One is red and the other blue. And when you look at the image through simple glasses, the red filter stops the red part of the image and the blue filter stops the blue part. And as each picture is slightly different, your brain makes them into one 3D image. So how can you create your own 3D image? Well, there are several methods. And the easiest one for you to try is just to use any camera just, and take a picture. It doesn't matter if it's a film camera or a digital camera, a compact camera or a professional SLR. You just take a picture. And then you move the camera sideways a little bit and take another picture. Now this is sometimes called the char-char method. It's, it's that simple. So now you have two pictures. Each one is slightly different, but when combined together, your brain can make them into one single 3D image. But there's a problem. If the camera did not move perfectly horizontally, or if anything in the scene moved from the time you took the first picture and the second, then that part of the picture is going to be out of register. Your brain will now have a hard time in making that into a 3D image. And out of register images is what gives 3D a bad name. As some people will say that they get a headache trying to view a 3D image. But that's usually the fault of the image and not of the person viewing it. And it's a similar story in watching, when watching fast moving seen in a modern 3D film. The images are changing so quickly your brain can't keep up and that's when some people start to feel seasick. Again, gives 3D a bad name. If you want to make sure that nothing moves when creating your 3D picture, then really the best way to do it 
is with a true 3D camera. Now a stereo camera usually has two lenses and two shutters set slightly apart, just like our own eyes, and it takes two pictures but at the same time. A simple internal baffle or a septum ensures that the light from one lens doesn't spill for over from one side to the other. Now stereo cameras can vary from the very simple, like this Thornton Picard stereo puck, which as you probably noticed is really nothing more than a box camera with a pair of very basic lenses and shutters built in. Then you have intermediate cameras like the Stereo Realist, very popular in the 1950s, 1960s, right through to the RBT 3D, which was literally two cameras cut up and then made into a single unit and the lenses are mechanically coupled. But what if you don't have a stereo camera? Well, as we have seen, pretty much any camera can be used to create a 3D picture using the old char-char method. Uh, and this is perfect if you just want to make the occasional 3D image, although it does have its limitations. Now I expect some of you will have more than one camera. Uh, so if you have two similar cameras, each with a prime lens of the same focal length, you can easily make your own stereo rig. All you need is a bracket and a means of firing both cameras off at the same time. Now, some cameras like these two Konicas have an electronic shutter release uh, and the remote shutter release can be wired up so that they can both fire together. If you have a pair of simpler film cameras, they can easily be coupled together with just a simple cable release, uh, the type that you get with a standard set of bellows units. You can, go though, you can buy those for just a few pounds. Now, if you have two similar digital cameras, you should be able to fire them simultaneously with a remote shutter release or even a radio release. This is ideal if you're working outdoors in bright sunshine. Most manufacturers will probably have their own remote release options and although sometimes these can be quite expensive, there are aftermarket options that are usually available. But that single camera that you already have could do an impressive 3D job with just the addition of a simple accessory and usually called a beam splitter. This screws into the filter ring of your lens and it splits the scene into two. And then when printed out and viewed in the stereo viewer, the resulting image is then in 3D. Now the really good thing about using a beam splitter is that you can just fit it to your lens whenever you want to take a 3D photograph. Even if you're in the middle of a roll of film or if you have normal images on your memory card. With the beam splitter, you can mix and match 3D and normal pictures as much as you like. You can have just one or two 3D pictures in amongst the rest of the photographs you've taken, but you could even shoot everything in 3D. Now, whatever type of camera you're using, be it film or digital, an SLR is the most practical because you can then see the exact effect of the beam splitter in your viewfinder. And for a film camera or if shooting with a full frame digital camera, most beam splitters are set up for use with a standard prime lens of around 50 millimetres. If you're using a DSLR with a crop sensor, then a prime 35 mil lens uh, is probably best. You shoot with the lens as wide open as possible, so this will give you a shallow depth of field and that will give you uh, an enhanced 3D effect. Now, 3D doesn't work with distant views, so try and include something in the foreground and something in the middle distance and this will all help to give your picture some real depth. Now, zoom lenses are not really suitable for use with a beam splitter uh, and nor are some autofocus uh, focus lenses unless there are internal focusing. Uh, why? Well, if your camera is ex doesn't have internal focusing, then every time you focus it, the, the beam splitter is going to whiz sideways and that's going to not give you any 3D effect at all. Now a compact film camera can also be used. Uh, here's a little setup I made for making 3D prints using uh, an Olympus Strip, a vintage beam splitter, which is easily available at online auction sites, um, and just a simple homemade bracket. Uh, this particular beam splitter has its own little viewfinder built in on the top, so you can pretty much see what you're going to get in the photograph. Very useful accessory. Now when using a beam splitter you must remember to keep the camera perfectly horizontal to, horizontal to avoid any alignment problems. 
Now, throughout the history of 3D, viewing the finished photograph has always been the problem. Some people will say that they don't like 3D as they have to wear those silly glasses. But if you've ever been to the cinema to see a 3D film, you will know that you have to wear the 3D glasses in order to see the 3D. And this is because, as we've already learned, there are two versions of the same scene being projected at the same time. And just as in the real world, each eye needs to see just one of the images. So for 3D films or on a 3D TV, simple polarised glasses are used with the polarised grids running at 90 degrees to each other. Each lens now blocks out one of the images. So again, your brain receives the two images that it's normally expecting. And just as you wear polarised sunglasses when you go out on a bright day to reduce glare, when watching a 3D film, these glasses uh, will cancel out a certain amount of light. And if you take them off and look at the screen, you will see that it's much brighter than when you're watching a normal 2D film. And this is because the polarising filters absorb between one and two stops of light. Now, after deciding how to take your 3D picture, your next decision is, do you want 3D prints or do you want 3D slides? Now, 3D prints are very easy to produce. Uh, if you're using a film camera, you can shoot on colour negative film and just have them commercially processed. Um, and then you can view them in a cheap 3D viewer. You can even try this without uh, a viewer, simply by placing the prints uh, next to each other on the table and then looking at them whilst going cross-eyed. With a bit of practice, you might be able to merge them into 3D. But shooting with a beam splitter is the quickest and easiest way to make your own prints. Uh, and colour prints always seem to work best, especially if there's something red in the picture to catch your eye. But black and white can work quite well as well. So unless you shoot with a beam splitter and have a simple six by four inch prints made, 3D with a digital camera can be a little more time consuming as you will have to align your two digital images in Photoshop or in something similar and then print them out. But most people I know who shoot digital 3D these days use Stereo Photo Maker. And this is a very popular and totally free software program. The good thing about Stereo Photo Maker is that it gives you the option to output the finished result in just about any 3D format that you can think of. And that includes vintage Victorian stereo cards and anaglyphs and everything else. In fact, using a very simple viewer, you can even view these in 3D on your existing computer screen and even on your smartphone. There is even a version of Stereo Photo Maker designed for producing your own 3D videos. A 3D slides are very easy with a film camera and a film splitter, and many sets come with a side viewer as standard. Uh, you just shoot using your favourite transparency film, uh, and when they're returned from processing, you simply drop a mounted slide into the top of the viewer, and there you are in 3D. It's as simple as that. And producing 3D slides digitally is possible, although projecting in 3D gives the best results. Showing it to a large group of people needs some experience and some specialised equipment. So whilst on the subject of 3D slides, you remember the Viewmaster system we mentioned earlier? Well, if you've ever wanted to make your own Viewmaster reels, there are a couple of cameras designed to do exactly that. Uh, Viewmaster marketed their Art Deco inspired Viewmaster personal camera in the early 1950s and their colour camera in the early 1960s. Uh, both produce around 70 stereo pairs on a standard 36 exposure, 35 millimetre transparency film. Uh, just remember to ask the film processors to return your film unmounted because you need to cut out the individual frames with the special Viewmaster cutter and then mount them into blank reels. Now basic Viewmaster viewers like this can be picked up for just a couple of pounds or if you really want to impress people uh, then there's even a Viewmaster stereo projector to show off your masterpieces in 3D. So this has been a very quick and a basic introduction to taking your own 3D pictures. So let's have a quick recap. You can take your 3D pictures with any camera using the sideways shuffle char char method. Have them printed as normal and view them in a simple viewer or even on screen. Using Stereo Photo Maker, remember it's free, 
straight from your digital files or from a scanned 3D film and then output your 3D images into any one of a number of different formats. You can add a beam splitter to your lens, shoot on colour negative film for prints and see them in a simple 3D viewer. Add a beam splitter to your lens, shoot on colour transparency film and see them in 3D with a dedicated viewer. So I'm afraid that's about all we've got time for today. Uh, if you've been bitten by the 3D bug and you want to find out more, uh, then I'll leave on screen when we finish uh, a note of some 3D resources.